Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Hope you're having a good day, a good blessed day. And just realize today, since you were privileged to wake up this morning, you have the opportunity to do something for God. And one thing you can do is get people to focus on Jesus and pay attention to Him. So that's going to be the title of our lesson today. Let's focus on Jesus. You know, in Hebrews 12, too, it partially reads, Let us run the race with endurance keeping our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. Now, King James says, fixing our gaze on Jesus. So, Jesus is the focal point. He, he is the one we need to focus on. Jesus is the focal point of the Bible. I mean, everything about the Bible is focused on Jesus. And so, this is a lesson I think we all need. And there's something here that we can all relate to in one way or another. And there are a lot of distractions in our lives, and it seems they multiply daily. And all of those distractions can and do take our focus off of our Lord. So you remember what happened when Peter was walking on the water? He took his eyes off of Jesus and looked upon the waves and billows of the sea, and yes, he began to sink. And he cried out to the Lord, save me. <coughs> now, most people have the wrong focus. It is quite obvious that most people in this world do not focus on Jesus or what he taught. And many of us, we get concerned about prices going up while paychecks seem to be going down. In fact, hundreds of people have lost their jobs and are looking to replace them. And some just get upset when their favorite show is canceled. And all these problems take attention away from the Lord Jesus. See, if there is any hope, it is found in Jesus. If there is any truth, yes, it is found in Jesus. If there is any life, it is found in Jesus. He is the life. If there is any way to God, it is through Jesus. So what we need to realize is that when we die, there is life after death, and we need to be prepared for it. And the only way that's going to happen is if we put our focus on Jesus and do what he says. So we need to adjust our focus sometimes to get it back on Jesus if we've lost that or if we've never had it there to start paying attention to who and what Jesus is. So we need to focus on Jesus. You know, in some ways, even many ways, we have lost our focus by the things we do every, every week, every day. I mean, we, we get sidetracked. And we go along and we might wake up thinking, well, I'm going to spend a few hours doing this or that for the Lord. Then all of a sudden you, you walk in the kitchen, well, dishes need to be done, breakfast needs to be cooked, uh, things like that. I mean, and sometimes we're here saying that we need to go to church. Yeah, I mean, on Sunday we need to go to church. Well, and we each mean something when we say such. But probably most of the meanings are scriptural and right with God when we say that. But there are sometimes we're not focused on the right things. And we get sidetracked and, real, oh man, I, I got to go to church. And we do that. that. But our problem is we're not focused on church. We're not focused on Jesus we're focused in our own ways, and then we have to work it in into our busy schedule. And so that, that's kind of looking at things from the wrong perspective. See, we're told we need to examine ourselves to see if we are right with God and Jesus. 2 Corinthians 13, 5, he asks the question, do you not know that Christ is in you? I mean, the same question can be asked today of all of our members. Rather than just go to church, we need to go to Jesus. And our focus should be to share fellowship with him. So we don't just partake of the Lord's Supper. We need to commune with Jesus. I mean, it is easy to get caught up in a routine. We, we realize that. You do the same thing over and over, you do it without thinking. And that's, that's a problem that a lot of us, a lot of us have. And so... So probably for, for many people, they may be partaking of the Lord's Supper, but they don't really reflect upon Jesus and what he did. They just do their little pinch and sip and feel they've done what God wants them to do, and they're happy with it. So there's a reason Jesus died on the cross. 
And we need to focus on that reason. It was for our salvation. And we don't need just to sing songs because, well, the song leader announced the song number and now we all sing. Maybe we like the music or maybe we like the singing, whatever. We need to pray, praise God for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we need to thank Christ for what he did. And we glorify God in our singing. We, 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 we magnify our Lord in our singing. And so we putting, we're putting effort into singing our best, whether we have decent voices or not. And that's what God wants. He does, he does, God doesn't listen to human voices. God listens to the human heart. <clears throat> and so we are to sing with the understanding of what we sing. And sometimes we let the rhythm of the music or the notes distract us from the message <clears throat> that is taught in the song. So it is possible to sing a song like Love One Another and not really mean it. I mean, we've sung that song so many times, we know the words by heart, so we, we can be thinking about the roast in the oven or, or the ball game coming up or, or the vacation we have planned, and even though we're physically singing the song Love One Another, I mean, our mind is somewhere else. And we can get distracted that way. So we need to know what we sing and to whom we are singing it. You know, some songs are sung to God. Some offer glory to Jesus. And a lot of songs are just there to encourage one another. Some, some songs actually teach lessons that people need to hear and understand. So it is evident from what we just said that we can attend the worship of God and miss the blessings that we should receive if we fail to focus on Jesus, if we fail to focus on God and what they did for us. So we need to ascend, attend the assembly. That, that's true. And we're, we're told why we need to do that. But we also need to pay attention to everything we are doing in the assembly. We need to be involved in it. Like I say, uh, it's so easy to get caught up in the same routine you do week after week that your mind is elsewhere while you are physically there singing songs, listening to prayers, and listening to the sermon. Your mind is somewhere else. So we need to get our focus back on where it needs to be. All right. Now, when we focus on Jesus, it means that we will be serving other people. You know, that's hard to believe because, well, Jesus was a servant. Because he commands it. Jesus said to serve others. And because we should want to. And that, that's why Jesus did. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Galatia. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. And so Galatians 5.13 tells us that. Our job, our duty as Christians, our goal and, and responsibility as Christians is to be servants to others. I mean, to focus on Jesus means we will work harder to assist others in various ways. We can encourage them. We can assist them financially if the need is there. We can be there when they are downtrodden, sorrowful, sad, despondent, depressed, or any other problem people face each and every day. We've just got to be there for each other. Because without each other, we're probably not going to make it. So that's why the church is so important. The local church is so important because we need each other. And one of the best things that we can do for others is to teach them about Jesus and encourage them to be faithful to Jesus. Remember, it is said in Acts that Philip preached to Jesus. And so that is what we need to learn to do. Preach Jesus. And they will ask what they need to do to be saved. And that is the formula used in Scripture. And that's the right thing to do. See, Jesus came to the earth to serve, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We read that in Matthew 20, verse 28. <clears throat> and we are to be like him and serve other people. More than any other factor, our judgment will be based on how we treat others. So learn to be a servant like Jesus. 
And when you're serving others and helping others in any way that you can, you're fulfilling the law of Christ. Because you're, and as long as you do it with love, you're fulfilling the law of Christ. And there are several passages that relate to the lesson given to the disciples about who is the greatest in the kingdom. You know, Matthew 18 and Luke 22 record that story. They were kind of arguing and bickering, who's greater, who's greater. Jesus made it clear that those are great. Those who are great are the ones who serve other people. And so it was the focus of Jesus to serve other people, and that should be our focus also. He came to serve, not to be served. You know, self-serving people will just go so far in this world. I mean, selfishness is an eradicator of kindness and a positive attitude. Selfish people want others to serve them. And I really believe that Jesus warns us not to serve that kind of person. And like the apostles, we need to chastise and warn them of their problem. See, when we find people who are serving other people, we will find people who are kind and content. We will find people who have captured the true essence that belongs to Christ. In 1 Peter 1, 1 Peter 2 tells us Christ is our perfect example, not only in living and suffering and dying, and then, of course, serving. And we're told to be like him. And so that, that's what we do. For the Christian, their whole life needs to be one that is totally, entirely focused on Jesus. You know, focused on who he is and what he is. Focused on doing what he said and focused on supporting those who do what he said. And focusing on helping others to do what he said. So the question is, are you focused? Are you thinking about these things? Consider these thoughts. I mean, I mean, keeping your gaze on Jesus. Remember what happens when you take your gaze off of Jesus. You're, you're looking somewhere else. And we should spend more time fixing our gaze on Jesus. And uh, he is the author and finisher of our faith. So that, that, that's what we need to focus on. All right, think about these things. Um, focus on Jesus, not just today, but every day. And you'll have a much better chance of reaching heaven when you do that. All right, consider these thoughts. And Lord willing, be back again tomorrow with another lesson. All right, bye-bye for now.